Hello, welcome to Lab 6 of Electrical Circuits 1. In this lab assignment, we'll be implementing an overall temperature control system. Related educational materials are in lectures B, C, and to some extent 12. Now, we won't be using a lot of specific information from the lectures with the exception of the operational amplifiers and other dependent source information. So related modules are 1.8.0, 1.8.1, and 1.8.2. We will, however, be using some of the material relative to MOSFETs, BJTs, from our introductory series of lectures. As I mentioned previously, our goal in this lab assignment is to create an overall system. Now this system is going to consist of a number of subsystems, and although the overall system design may appear somewhat complex, the individual subsystems are actually fairly easy to deal with. So our practice in this lab assignment is going to be to break down an overall problem into a number of smaller manageable tasks. What we're going to create is a temperature control system. Now, our subsystems in that system will be what is called a plant, a sensor, or a temperature measurement system, and a compensator. So our overall goal is going to be to control the temperature of a power, power resistor by adjusting the voltage which is applied to the resistor. Now, one main concept we will be introduced to here is feedback control. Feedback control consists of controlling a process based on measuring something. For example, if your cruise control in your car is measuring the speed that you're going, you can give it a desired speed that you would like the car to be going. The compensator will then compare the desired speed and the actual speed and either increase or decrease the speed appropriately to get your actual speed to match your desired speed. Now, in this particular lab assignment, what we are going to use is what's called a two-level or an on-off compensator. Our controller will either be fully on or fully off. It's more analogous to a furnace system in a house. If the house is too cold, the furnace turns on until the house warms up to the desired temperature. After that, the furnace turns off and the house cools down until the furnace turns on again. Now, there will be a number of side things that we'll do in the process of achieving our main objective. We'll talk more about operational amplifiers. We'll deal with power amplification. Both of those things will be viewed as dependent sources. We'll also get our first experience with observing and measuring time-varying waveforms. The next few slides will be nomenclature type slides. In my previous slide, I talked about a plant, a sensor, and a compensator. I now want to introduce those terms officially and demonstrate what physical part corresponds to each of those subsystems. Now for us, the plant will be the subsystem which is being controlled. As I mentioned earlier, we want to control the temperature of a power resistor, so our plant is simply the resistor whose temperature is to be set to the desired value. Now each of these subsystems will be described by an input-output relationship. So for the resistor, we are applying a voltage to the resistor, V sub R. Increasing the voltage to the resistor will increase the resistor temperature. Decreasing the voltage applied to the resistor will decrease the temperature. The temperature decreases because of the heat lost to the surrounding atmosphere. So our input is some applied voltage, our output is a temperature of the resistor. So in the control system that we're designing, our plant is nothing more than a resistor. It is in fact the power resistor out of your analog parts kit. So I have two leads on this resistor. If I apply a voltage difference across those leads, that will dissipate power through the resistor. So the more voltage I apply, the more power gets dissipated. That power is always dissipated as heat. So increasing the voltage will increase the temperature of the resistor. Decreasing the voltage will typically decrease the temperature of the resistor. Our second subsystem is the sensor, or more generally, the measurement system. The sensor or the measurement system measures the parameter being controlled. If we want to control the temperature of the resistor, we have to measure that temperature and then feed that temperature back to our compensator to decide whether we want to increase or decrease the voltage to the resistor. In our particular case, our sensor is going to be a thermistor, 
as we saw in lab two and a couple of later labs, a thermistor has a resistance which varies with temperature. So the sensor itself, the input is temperature, the output of that is some change in resistance or a value of resistance. Now we also saw in previous labs that the resistance was not necessarily directly useful to do anything with. We converted that resistance to a voltage, generally by using something like a voltage divider or a Wheatstone bridge. For our purposes in this lab, a voltage divider will be just fine. So the resistance change gets applied to a voltage divider. The output of the overall measurement system is a voltage which indicates the actual temperature. So our output is temperature, but its units are volts. The sensor for our control system is going to be the thermistor that we used in previous labs. This is a 10 kilo ohm at 25 degrees centigrade negative temperature coefficient thermistor. Now in order to have this thermistor measure temperature of our resistor, we're going to need to attach the two together. What I'm going to do is hot glue the two together and then just operate the system at temperatures low enough so that the hot glue doesn't melt and the two become detached. Now let's draw a circuit schematic of our overall plant plus temperature measuring system. Our plant is simply a, the power resistor from our analog parts kit. We are going to apply a voltage to this as our input, V sub R. The resulting output from the plant is going to be some temperature. So as we increase V sub R, this temperature will go up. As we decrease V sub R, this temperature will go down. This temperature is used by a thermistor to vary a resistance. So this RTH is a variable resistance based on this temperature. In order to complete our temperature measuring system, we can put this resistance in series with a constant resistance R. This voltage here will be our voltage representing our actual temperature, VACT. Now we'll need to provide power to this temperature measuring system. In lab two, we just applied five volts to this. That should be appropriate for this case too. So now we have a plant plus temperature measuring system. The input of that overall system is a voltage V sub R. The output is going to be a voltage V act, which indicates the actual temperature that this resistor is at. Now let's take a look at our compensator circuit. Our final subsystem is the compensator, or sometimes called the controller. It's the compensator's job to decide how much input to apply to your plant in order to make the output be what you want it to be. In our particular case, our compensator is going to apply a voltage to the resistor in order to maintain the desired resistor temperature. Now the desired temperature is often called a reference value. So we're going to use a two-level compensator as I mentioned previously. What we're going to do is compare the actual and the reference temperatures. This particular block has two inputs, one of which is a voltage which indicates the desired temperature or the reference temperature, so that's VREF. The other input is the actual voltage VACT. Now, your temperature measurement system is providing VACT. The only input you apply to the overall system is the reference voltage. So the reference voltage is telling this system how hot you want the resistor to be. Now in a two-level compensator, our output, which is just the voltage applied to the resistor, V sub R, is either on or off. If the temperature is too low, okay, so if V act is below V ref, you turn the voltage to the resistor on, it becomes a high voltage and the resistor heats up. If your actual voltage is higher than your reference voltage, you want to cool the resistor off, you simply turn off V sub R so that no voltage is applied to the resistor and the resistor will dissipate heat to the ambient atmosphere and cool down. Now one shortcoming of this control scheme is that I cannot cool my resistor to below room temperature. But that's okay, we're not going to use that as a design requirement. Our overall compensator is just going to be an on-off system. The output is either going to be a high voltage or a low voltage. I can use an operational amplifier with no feedback in order to perform that switching operation. So for example, on my circuit, if I take an operational amplifier 
and I apply my desired voltage, V ref, to the non-inverting terminal, and the actual voltage, VACT, 